We wait. 
Father, our hearts are overflowing this morning, and, and Lord, we're reminded that you are a, a good, good Father, a wonderful God who loves us. Lord, we see the children and their testimonies, and God, we're reminded of the things that, Lord, that you value, Lord, that are important to you, and Lord, that's important to us. Father, thank you for even uh, the new life that that is here among us today, Delaney Rose, and, and Father, for the purpose that you have for her life. We just thank you for that. Lord, we thank you that you have purpose for every one of us in this room. And God, that you are the God who directs us. And today, Lord, as we worship and as we praise you and as we lift up the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, Lord, we just want to say thank you. And we thank you, Father, for being so faithful. Just pour out your spirit here, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we certainly have been blessed, haven't we? Boy, what a wonderful service. Uh, what a wonderful 
uh, video. Thank you for that. And uh, everybody that had hands in that, just so appreciative. And, and uh, just it's a great day to be here. It's always a great day, but especially today as we uh, focus in on our, our moms, our ladies, and, and just uh, give God thanks and give God praise. And, and we do want to talk about family today. And I want to just say thank you to Evelyn for those wonderful flowers. And uh, she is so faithful to bless us uh, with those. And, and uh, we are uh, just thankful for that. It's good to be here. And if you're a guest with us, I just want to especially welcome you here. And, and our prayer is, is that God speaks into your life, whether it's in a conversation, whether it's in a class, whether it's in a prayer request or a, a song of worship or through the message. We are asking and we pray that God just speaks into your heart and ministers in that area of your life that uh, he knows that you need ministering in. Because really, uh, we're all in that same position, aren't we? That we need to hear from God. We need to hear his, his comfort, his strength, his word of encouragement, his word of joy. Sometimes a word of rebuke the Lord has for us. And, and we're just praying that, that God speaks and God ministers to you as you as you join us here today. And we just want to say thank you for being here and that you are so welcome to be here. God is good and, and uh, just excited to be here and, and thankful that God has meaning and purpose uh, for all of our lives, right? That we're not just meant to uh, be born and go through the motions uh, and then one day die, but God has, a, uh, has a something special for each one of us. God has gifted each one of us with with something that he wants us to use for his glory. Let me begin by just saying happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. And just to say that we praise God for you and, and for all of our ladies. And, and we just want to give you honor today. We want to bless you. Amen. We want to bless you and, and pray that God uh, pours out his blessing in a special and a powerful way in all of your lives, especially today. And just to say thank you. I think um, mom's motherhood is, is one of those thankless jobs, right, that often just gets uh, assumed and uh, is underappreciated. But we want to just pause today and just say thank you. We want to say that we recognize your labor of love, your service. We recognize the sacrifice uh, that, that moms uh, give for their families. You know, this is in no way to diminish any roles, but I think when I think of a mom, I think of the heart of the family, and, uh, and I know some have been raised without moms, and that's not to diminish the role of the father in any way. But, but oftentimes, it's the mom that, that just brings uh, the house and makes it a home, and uh, that uh, brings the family together. And, and uh, when I think of the home, I think of, uh, the, when I think of the heart of the family, I think of mom. And moms do make us come together as one, don't they? And, and they coordinate things and, and put it together. If, if you had to give a word to describe your mom or motherhood, what would you say? Anyone? Strong? Awesome. Good cook. Courageous? Great. Rock. Faithful. Amen. Yes, we could. Nurturing, right? Loving, compassionate, caring, giving, sacrificial, patient. I heard some amens on that one, right? Protective, right? Your mother's very protective. Encouraging, counselor, chief bandager, right? If you were a kid and you fell down, you wanted mom to deal with it, right? No offense, dads. You wanted, you wanted moms to deal with the injury. They just had a way of doing it in a, a more gentle way, right? Yes. I, I'm confessing maybe I haven't been as gentle on some of the injury issues in our family. <laughs> we'll stop there. Moms have a unique role. Of course, moms are the ones who carry the baby, right? Nine months usually. And I think that... Uh, with that carrying of the child, I think there is a unique bond there. And, of course, us men, uh, we, we, won't, we won't have that privilege, but I, I believe that there is a unique bond there because of that carrying. And it's a God-given role, right? The motherhood is a God-given role. Jesus, looking back in, in, uh, in time, 
to the beginning, Jesus said, from the beginning, God made them, made them male and female. Male and female. The female, right, the mother is the only one who can bring forth the child, bear the child, and bring the child to uh, birth. And, and it's a little bit of a divergence here, but I think it's worth saying in our day and age, in our culture, that, that when it comes to marriage, it is between a man and a woman, right? There's a debate in our society about what is marriage, but let me tell you, there's no debate in the mind of God. There's no debate in the design of God. God has, from the beginning, made them male and female, and it is that union that can bring forth children. And uh, I think it's important to say, as, as we, we often hear the other side of it, right? We're filled with the message that that counters that message, and, and it's worth saying, and it's important to say. I want to ask today, what is God's calling for every wife and mother? And uh, this is an important proverb, Proverbs 31. I want to look at this proverb, and, and I want to just encourage you, because there's a little bit of a twist at the end, but just uh, be listening to what God is calling uh, the wife and the mother to be and to do in, uh, in life, in, in her function, in her role. Look at Proverbs 31. I just want to take a few minutes and go through this proverb with you. It says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. Her worth is far above rubies. It's kind of a, a little bit funny sounding to say that, but that's what the scripture says. That One person puts it this way, No quantity of precious stones can be equal to her. Right? No earthly value can be equal to a virtuous wife. And isn't it true that the wise husband understands this, right? She is more valuable, more important than fill in the blank, right? She is more important than that. Nothing of earthly possession or awe takes precedence over her, she's the priority. His relationship with her is the priority over everything this world has to offer. Jobs, careers, vacations, toys, right? That's what the scripture is saying, that her worth is far above precious stones, rubies. The wise husband understands this truth that truly his wife is a gift from God. Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Amen. And because this is so, the wise husband willingly serves. He willingly gives. The wise husband loves his wife, the scripture says, as his very own body. And he lays down his life even as Christ laid down his life for his bride, right? Right? which is us. Christ, the ultimate example of a faithful husband, the husband to the church, the head of the church, the one who gave everything that we might live. Look at verse 11. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her so he will have no lack of gain. The NIV says it like this. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. The Proverbs 31 woman is a woman whose character resonates with integrity. She captures the heart of her husband, and he is smitten by her trustworthiness. She instills in him a confidence about the future. Trust is all about the future, isn't it? When we think about trust, we're thinking about those things that we can't see, those things that are unknown. That's about the future. Look at the next verse. We ask the question, why is this husband trusting his wife? And look at the next verse, verse 12. It says, because she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. Isn't it true that this woman, this wife, And mother is so much more, right? So much more than just that. She is a worker. She is one who sees the need, who understands the need. 
She is a planner. She is a provider. And she is one whose husband, right, has empowered her to use her God-given gifts to be a blessing to the family. And often, especially when we look at backward cultures, there's a, there's a, there's a reverse of that. There's not the empowerment of the wife, but there's the, the, this, this uh, attempt to control and to put fences around the wife. And, and uh, we see it in dramatic forms and sometimes the way that dr- the dress of other cultures. But a godly husband is one who has empowered his wife to use her God-given gifts to be a blessing to the family. He trusts in her because she is trustworthy. And he says to her, go and do what you need to do, right? Look at next, the verse 16. She considers a field and she buys it from her prophets. She plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. I like that phrase, she considers a field and buys it. She considers a field and buys it. You know, she takes risks, right? She's she's a risk taker. She is marked by an entrepreneurial spirit. When I look at that, I think she's a woman who sees the world in faith, right? Because in order to take risks, you've got to be someone who sees in faith. It's not all doom and gloom to this woman, right? To the Proverbs 31 woman. Because isn't it true that it's the doom and the gloomers that don't take risks, right? Because we're too afraid. We're too afraid. We don't like to step out of our comfort zones. We like to try to control and make things secure for us. But here is a Proverbs 31 woman that considers a field. She factors it in her mind, considering what can be gained, and she steps out and she purchases that field. This woman trusts that God is with her, that God has granted her gifts and purpose, that her life is marked with meaning and importance. That's why she's stepping forward. And she is marked by increase, right? She's marked by the blessing of God. Listen to the, again, it says, from her prophet, she plants a vineyard. That's a, great, that's a great verse. That's a great statement. She doesn't waste her profits, right? She doesn't use them uh, for purposes that aren't good. She, rather, she uses them for the good. She, she is increased by God. She, she profits by God. And she takes those profits and she invests them even further. In other words, this is what I see of this Proverbs 31 woman, that she doesn't just live for the moment, Right? It's not just about getting a big wad set aside so you can just go out and blow it. This woman is not, doesn't tick like that. She's someone who takes her increase and invests it even further. I'm reminded of, of what Paul wrote to Timothy. And I think these things are spiritual, uh, spiritually applied to our lives. But he says of this, uh, speaking of widows, that she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. That's a message to us, right? That it's not about the moment. It's not just about having a good time, but it's about serving and loving and taking what God has given us and using it for the increase of his kingdom. Her eye is looking forward. She perceives that her merchandise is good. I like to think of it like this, that she's no victim, right? She's no easy prey. She's not taken by a slick salesman. She does her research. She makes sure of what the truth is, of what the product is. Unfortunately, I've made those mistakes sometimes, right, where you, you, you buy and then you discover later that that was the wrong purchase, right? She is a woman who has done her research. She is not enamored with the latest and the greatest. The scripture says also that her lamp does not go out by night. She's ready. She's ready. She's always ready. And in this picture of this Proverbs 31 woman, in her prosperity, she doesn't then become lax, right? But her lamp is burning. She doesn't, she's not like that rich fool, right, that Jesus told the parable of, about. She's not like that rich fool that said, boy, look at my barns are packed full. And, and he says to his soul, take your ease, soul. Eat, drink, and be merry. This is not this woman. 
She does not let her prosperity lure her into complacency, but she's diligent. Her life is marked by diligence. And really, she sees her wealth as a means to an end. Look at verse 19. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands holds the spindle, that those tools that make clothing. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. This is the heart of the Proverbs 31 woman, that, that, that as God brings her increase, she uses that increase to be a blessing to those in need. With her wealth, she provides. With her hands, she works. With her, the, the blessings that God has given, she reaches out to the less fortunate, to those who are in crisis, right? To those who are in need. We can say this about the Proverbs 31 woman, that she is marked by generosity. And I believe that when she gives, she rejoices. She rejoices that not only has God enabled her and blessed her with so much to give back, but she's praising God that God has allowed her that moment in time to be a blessing to those in need. She's rejoicing. She doesn't do it grudgingly. She's rejoicing. God, you have given me this, that I can use it to extend a helping hand to someone that is in need, to someone that is in crisis. God, thank you. I believe that in her heart she worships. She knows that her life has purpose, that her wealth has purpose, that her life has meaning. And she, mo- she knows that she must serve. If I can say it this way, it's in her DNA. I'm reminded of the qualifications for financial help uh, that, that, that God, I believe, put on the, ch- the early church for widows. And here's one of the things that it says about a qualification to helping widows. Well reported for good works. If she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. What a call. What a call to not just ladies but men. What a call. Look at verse 21. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. Some translations will say uh, clothed in double layers. We hear about layers, right, nowadays? Layer, layer. You want to stay warm? The, the truth is that in this scripture, what we're, what we're reading is she's not afraid. She's not afraid because she's ready. Her life is marked by wisdom. She has looked ahead and she has prepared. She knew winter was coming, right? As it does predictably. She knows what's ahead, even as the wise today know what's ahead, right? Something's changing. Things won't all be as they are right now today. Some things changes in the wind, as they say. We read it. We understand it. That things will not always be as they are today. What are my doing today to prepare for the future? The wise woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, is not afraid because she's ready. She understands change. She is the opposite of a fool, right? Because when we think about, when you think about a biblical fool, as I've thought about it, I thought of a, a, a biblical fool is someone who just lives in the moment. There is no reflection of the things that lie ahead. She's not that at all. Look at verse 22. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. I like that phrase, that strength and honor are her clothing. Make no mistake that this Woman, this Proverbs 31 woman is concerned about what's happening on the inside, right? It's not just about the outside, but strength are issues of character. Honor is issues of character. These are her clothing. She knows, even as we're going to get to in verse 30, that charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. 
But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. I think she's, in her spirit, she's heard what we read in Peter, the Lord's voice. Do not let your adornment be merely outward. Don't let it be merely outward, focusing in on hair and gold and fine apparel, but rather let it be of the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. In other words, she adorns her inner being, right? Her inner person with things that God values, with things that God esteems. Her spirit is marked by the presence and the peace of God. I love that phrase, strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. The NASB says she smiles at the future. She smiles at the future. Doesn't weep about it. Doesn't wring her hands about it. But she smiles at the future because she's ready. Her house is in order. And she is a woman who moves and lives in wisdom. Therefore, she has nothing to fear, right? Right? Jesus said, don't fear. the Even if, even if your life is on the line, Jesus said, don't fear those who take, that can kill the body, right? Don't fear that. Look at verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Hers is a life that is well lived. And when she speaks, she speaks in wisdom and she speaks in kindness. And I think we all echo that about our mothers. That she speaks words of life, words of truth, words of knowledge. She is kind. Not just knowing what to say, right, but how to say it. And that's where us guys, I think, struggle more. Sometimes we're we're okay at knowing what to say, but it's how we say it, right? We struggle with that. She watches over the ways of her household. She knows what's, what's happening, what's going on. She's aware. She sees herself as a steward, that she's responsible She does not eat the bread of idleness. She stays focused. She lives with purpose. She lives with zeal. She understands the context of her life, her time, what's ahead. And her children rise up and call her blessed. And her husband also. Everyone knows the value, right, of this woman. Everyone knows the value. It's not hidden. It's open. And it's recognized. And everyone witnesses God's grace in her life. Look at verse 29. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Her works will praise her. Her works will bless her and others. Let her enjoy them, the word tells us. Let her enjoy those things, the scriptures tell us. And here's the little twist. As we go through Proverbs 31, what I see is not just a call to wives, to women, to mothers, but I see a call to the church, right? Because we are the bride of Christ. This is, this is applicable to us as the body of Christ. And all these things that have been said and this glorious picture of the Proverbs 31 woman is a call to the church to be the faithful bride of Christ, to look forward, right, and anticipate him and to prepare and to live life now so that we're ready, right, when he returns. I'm reminded that our works matter. That in eternity, our works now will give a testimony to us, right? You know, some will say, but my life is marred. I'm no Proverbs 31 woman. And I want to ask you, are you sure? Because isn't the truth, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. Isn't that what God tells us? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. You know, I'm reminded of of two examples one is the, the story of Rahab, whom the scripture clearly identifies was a prostitute. And yet it was her family that was, that was saved, right? That was redeemed. 
there out of Jericho. It was her family because she was a woman of faith. That story, we don't have time to get into it as, as we're going to close. But it was her faith, as, as one person put it, that not only pardoned her, and hear this, but exalted her to the highest honor. Right? This prostitute, this call lady, Rahab was admitted among the people of God. She intermarried into a chief family of a chief tribe and found a place among the best remembered ancestors of King David and thus of Christ. And so it doesn't matter how you start. It matters if God's at work in your life redemptively. The power, the message of the life of Rahab is I believe that she became a Proverbs 31 woman. She saw in faith. She moved in faith. She lived in faith. She believed that God had purpose with this tribe they called Israel that had come out of Egypt and sheer her lot and her portion was with them. And she believed in their God. And she became that Proverbs 31 woman. And, and one other example, Luke 8, 2 and 3, it'll be in front of you. A little hard to read. It says, certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Don't you see the irony of this picture that the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, of the disciples, was financed by a woman whom Jesus had cast seven demons out of? right? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. These were women who were Proverbs 31 women. These were women whom God had moved in their lives redemptively, and God was using them to be the financiers of the ministry of Jesus Christ. I I just have to say wow to that. Wow to that, that God is that type of a God, that God moves redemptively and restores people to places and puts them in places that they would have never dreamed of. In the line of the king, people who support and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, as a church, let me just say what a calling to us, right? What a calling to be that Proverbs 31 woman. And as a wife and as a mother, what a calling, especially to you, right? Do you accept this high calling? I pray that you do. I pray that you do. Well, again, it's wonderful to be here to honor our moms, and we want to honor them. We're going to call the kids uh, forward. I don't see them yet, but I know that they're nearing, and uh, we might have to sing, but we would want to just give you a gift. Here they come. All right. Moms, would you just stand up? We want to have the kids distribute, and all the ladies, all the ladies out of high school or above, Just please stand up where you're at, and kids, you can just begin distributing these gifts. And uh, we want to just give you this small gift of appreciation uh, from our hearts to yours. And we want to, as as everyone has received that gift, we want to just say a prayer of blessing uh, on our moms, our wives, our ladies. All right. They're moving out quick. They're doing a good job. All right, if, you have, if, if it looks like you're going to be missed, be sure to raise your hand, but hopefully they'll get everybody. And while we have a little bit of the delay here while I'm thinking about it, if you have a birthday in May, if you have a birthday in May, we want to ask you right after service to go and stand by the birthday cake area and and Pastor Kurt's going to take your picture and we want to honor you today too all right and if you know of a mother that would like to have one we do have a few extra so has everybody got one All right, so once again, moms, could I ask you to stand up, all mothers, all right, all ladies, everybody out of high school, all right, I think everybody's got one, all right, if you didn't get one, we'll get you one after service.
And could I just have your attention and let's just let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Would you join me in, in prayer? And husbands, would you pray for your wives as, as I pray? Would you lift them up before the Lord and just ask for God's blessing upon them? Let's pray. Father, Lord, motherhood is your design. God, your word tells us that, that you made them male and female in the beginning in your image. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for every mother, for every lady here today. Lord, we know that they are gifts from you to their families, to their spouses, to those lives that they touch. And Father, Lord, what we're asking is, is that you would just pour upon them right now blessing. God, that you would pour upon them the peace of your Holy Spirit, that you would pour upon them a comfort, Lord. Maybe they're worried about a child. Maybe they're worried about a spouse. God, would you pour upon them right now your spirit to minister to their spirit? Lord, would you, God, give them wisdom, give them courage, give them strength. Lord, would you let them know how much they are appreciated, how much they are loved. And Lord, how oftentimes we don't say it, but Lord, let them know today how much they are appreciated and seen as valuable. Lord, we thank you for the Proverbs 31 woman. We thank you for the calling that it is to all of us. And God, as we go from this place, Lord, would you just kindle in our spirits the spirit of that woman of Proverbs 31. God, that we would not be afraid of the future. Lord, that we would not be living for the moment. But Lord, that we would be living for eternity, that we'll be living for that moment when we stand before you. And Lord, may we all hear those those wonderful words, well done, now good and faithful servant. Lord, we praise you today. And Lord, finally, we do ask a special blessing upon all those that were born in this month. And God, we just thank you for them in Jesus' name. 